What's up, guys? Welcome to the Kinda Funny Games cast. As always, I'm Tim Geddes, joined by one of the coolest dudes in video games, Greg Miller. Hey, everybody. I have a Nintendo Switch. I've been playing it a lot. Oh, yeah? What you been playing? You know that Animal Crossing, Tim? Come on. I, I got a hot dog I costume. I know. I got the hot dog costume. I got the hot dog head. It's a big day today. You got the shrine, the gen shrine. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that a lot. No it problem. Really, really There's good. no better way to show a woman you love her than to take her face and plaster it all over the inside of an Many animal crossing times. room. Many times. How, how hard is that? How hard? Oh, it's so simple. Yeah? Yeah, it's just a website. Uh, what is it? AC, acpatterns.com slash editor. You can go in there and upload any photo you want, and then it'll give you a QR code that you scan with the Nook app on your phone and then download in the game. The Nook oh, app. that's Man, so smart. It's so simple. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they got uh, dude. Not only that, like, did you, I'm sure I don't know how much you actually how much during this whole uh, I wanted to say during this whole forced uh, quarantine. I almost said segregation. Like, that's not what this is. Nope. <laughs> nope. How much? How much <laughs> during this? Quarantine? The top there, the <laughs> that's why we have these borders around keeping us apart. Uh, do you talk to Joey about Animal Crossing? Is it one of those things like she's like your little sister who's always telling you something? Or do you not even engage with her? You know nothing about Animal Crossing from her? It's more one of those things where we'll, me and Gio will be eating dinner or something, and then Joey will be in the room, and then she'll just be making sounds. <laughs> Ooh. It's a, lot, it's a lot of, like, yeah, happy things, upset things, and we're never sure what's going on in her little world. Yeah. Uh, but she seems overall happy. I know she got a Godzilla, so. Yeah, okay. So you're <laughs> so. behind. What I was going to tell you is you want to know how all in I am. I, Joey texted me one day, and she's like, have you heard about ACNH Travel Guide? And I was like, no. And it's a it's an app you get on your phone that somebody else made. It was over on the Animal Crossing subreddit. And for three dollars, you can go in there and track all the <laughs> bugs and like uh, fossils you've gotten. And it sounds crazy because it's just tracking. No, but what it does, it does, it'll tell you what's available. Currently available, I could get 21 different kinds of bugs, and I can go in there and see all they are, and then favorite them if I got them. Like right now, I can get a fly that I don't have, a peacock butterfly. You might say, Greg, how would you get a peacock butterfly? And I'm like, I need to know too. Well, between four and 19 hours, <laughs> so between 4 a.m. and whatever the fuck 19 is, between March and June, I can go buy flowers <laughs> that are black, blue, or purple, and I'll find this mm. little guy over there, and I can get them. I need to get some black, blue, or purple flowers, guys. That's what I know. Now I know what to do tonight. You know what I mean? We That's also have the former informer, Imran Khan. How I like Animal it? Crossing. I don't know that I like it as much as Greg apparently loves it. Have you Love been it. playing it a lot? No, I, I I like it a good deal. I I play it like I played every other Animal Crossing. Of I put a couple of hours in a day and I'm good. Uh -huh. Like I don't I don't I don't draw people's faces and put them in there. I think that's a step you cannot come back. From. Well, for the record, I've never drawn someone's face. I've just I uploaded just their photos. Custom website. I've just uploaded Shuhei Yoshida's photo me. and my wife's photo, and I put them into things. All right. Oh man, and then of course, blessing Adeoye Jr., the new face of video games. How are you doing? Are you are you telling me that there are there are certain things that will only spawn during certain times of the day? You know, yeah, certain crossing? times of the day, certain conditions, certain months. Like this certain is a game weather. you will play the rest of your life. Blessing. I don't know if I can keep doing it. <laughs> <laughs> that was yeah, a level of commitment that I did. I was not in it for. What's your update on Animal Crossing, Bless? I've fallen off. I mean, I'm not. Boo. Off, but I just I've not had the time I've wanted to dedicate to Animal Crossing within the last week. I was mm. in it for the first, I'm going to say, three to four days. And then this week, I mean, as people who are, that are watching this now know, right, we've got Resident Evil 3, and so I've been playing that. Uh, I've been playing other games for PS Love You, and there's just been stuff going on, and so I've not been able to play as much as I've wanted to. But mm -hmm. I, for what I played of it, I really enjoyed my time with it. I still plan to jump back in. I'm not, I'm not done, but it's just one of those... Bunny Day, April 1st, buddy. Strap in. We like, gotta bunny go. Day. Bunny, oh, yeah, Bunny Day is so happening. Easter... Is April first? No, but no, as you like as you might not yeah. as you might have noticed, Tim. All right, Tim. Yeah, Nintendo's not going to come out and claim that Jesus Christ is the Lord and Savior. All right, so it's not officially Easter. It's just Bunny Day. It runs for what, it. 13, Joke's 14 days. Jokes on me. I am the yeah, April clown. Fool himself. <laughs> Anyways, we're not talking about Animal Crossing today. Today we are talking about Resident Evil Three. Uh, but before we do that, I want to let you know this is the Kind of Funny Games cast each and every week, right here on YouTube.com/slash Kind of Funny Games. We get together, talk about video games, all the things that we love about them. You can get the show. Uh, usually live when there's not an embargo for uh, the, the game that we're talking about, like is the case with this episode, by going to patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames. Uh, you also get the exclusive post show there, and you get the show ad-free, and you can be a Patreon producer, just like Mohammed Mohammed, James Hastings, 
Evan Ballard, Steven Insler, Sancho West Gaming, Duval King, Jabub, Cody Banks, Agent Cody Banks himself, uh, Trent Berry, Max Blair, Julian the Gluten-Free Gamer, Tom Bach, uh, not related to Tom Nook, but similar enough in my heart. Close. Nano Support, Michael Bradley, and Joseph O. Yusuf. Y'all making things happen, and we appreciate you. Your money's going directly to Greg's Animal Crossing apps. <laughs> All right. I spent $3. $3 right. to get your little your bugaboos or whatever the hell It's you also do. going to Imran back there with his uh, hokey joysticks or hoary joysticks and his uh, <laughs> controller and hokey. his book or whatever. <laughs> Oh, man. But if you don't have the bucks, it's all good. You can watch the show later on YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games or RoosterTeeth.com or on a podcast service of your choice. Just search for Kind of Funny Games cast. Let's get right into it, boys. Resident Evil 3. Speaking of Animal Crossing, (laughs) (laughs) you play two games at the same time that were about resource and pocket management. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh. exactly. like, I, I switch between them and I'm like wait which game what do I not have wood in this one no this one I'm fine <laughs> so Resident Evil 3 all three of us four of us have beat this game at yeah. this point yep. um, what, what are our top level thoughts bless so I feel like for me Resident Evil 3 is kind of like the embodiment of the phrase like I'm not I'm not mad I'm just disappointed <laughs> <laughs> and like I don't I, I don't think it's like it's it's a good game but compared to Resident Evil 2 I feel like it's just w- very underwhelming for me uh and kind of every every way shape and form and so like it, it in essence it kind of feels like it's standalone DLC for Resident Evil 2 remake um for, for perspective I've not played Resident the original Resident Evil 3 and so I can't really judge it on how well of a re- or how good of a remake it is and so really I'm judging it off of it being kind of a sequel to Resident Evil 2 mm-hmm. um but it it takes a lot of the same like or not even a lot it takes like pretty much all the same mechanics and structures and UI and, and everything from Resident Evil 2 which is okay because these games are coming out very close to each other and that's kind of what I expected but it doesn't really do much to it it didn't really do much to evolve it what it kind of did was it uh it went for more of an action uh uh an action style of gameplay yes. and i feel like that in some ways that helped that helped differentiate it from resident evil 2 and it makes it feel like somewhat of a different game but in the ways that for me resident evil 2 was such such a an amazing game last year because of uh how it would put you in an environment it, like Resident Evil 2 uh, started you off in that police station and was like hey just like search around uh you like your whole thing right here is you're trying to figure out like how to solve this this dungeon essentially right the police station is a dungeon the the different levels in Resident Evil 2 are, are basically big dungeons RE3 is way more linear and action focused and that doesn't always work to its benefit in fact I don't I don't think it really works to its benefit much uh there are a few times where I was like okay yeah this is like this is a cool thing, but overall, I I overall the game is good. It's like it's it's a good game, just very disappointing compared to what we got with RE2. I feel like I'm a lot higher on it than than you are, but mm-hmm. uh, a lot of your criticisms and, and thoughts on it do reflect my own. I feel like Resident Evil 2 being my game of the year last year. It's funny because there were so many things about the game as I was playing it. A lot of the puzzle stuff, a lot of the backtracking, uh, just like little things. I'm like, I just wish this wasn't in it. Like, I, I want to get, I want, I wish it was a bit more linear and a bit more, a, a bit less obtuse in in many moments. And this game is that. And then playing mm-hmm. through this, I'm like, huh, this is exactly what I wanted. But for some reason, it's not. Like, mm-hmm. this is not my game of the year. And Resident Evil 2 is. I don't know if it's coming down to I really liked Claire and Leon. Like, I like Jill a lot. Carlos, take it or leave it with this like one. big carry bag of nothing in this game. Dude. Yeah. Like, whenever I'm playing it, I'm like, I feel literally nothing about this character at all. Such and a it, cliche, it, I feel, right? And I feel then, like you it, talk about an updated version of Resident Evil 3, and I didn't play the original Resident Evil 3, right? But like, yeah, just I'm this dude. And yeah, and like, all right, Jill, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna nig you a bit, but then you're gonna turn it back or near you, you don't have to take my shit. And then people are like, Oh, you're gonna save your girlfriend? It's, it's not like that. And I'm like, what, what the fuck am I watching? What am I playing right yeah. now? Yeah, he falls and in love I, with her real fast. Yeah, <laughs> I, I enjoyed the like kind of like it's like a bad B movie. That's what Resident Evil is. Even Resident Evil 2 was like, yeah. I, I had everything you just said, like, we can totally put on Ada and, and Leon. It's like, what is going on here, right? Yeah. And then immediately, uh, Leon and Claire. Um, but I, I did enjoy all the set pieces and I, it, it felt more like an uncharted 
uh, Lost yes. Legacy version of Resident Evil. And I'm here for it. Like, I enjoy that. I just think that it is weird coming right off of Resident Evil 2 because I'm familiar with the original games. I'm familiar with Jill from the first game. We're just in a weird place where Resident Evil 1 remake and then 2 and 3 remakes, they're acting like they're in the same world, but they don't feel that way. So it's kind of weird this being the sequel to last year's game and it kind of having a lot of similar elements, but we're just expected to know a lot of the character dynamics between these people. I am in a very similar place to both of you. I, as I started the game the first time, like after the previewed stuff and all that, I was like, this is really, really fucking good. Like, I, I think I said to some friends that I think I like RE3 make more than RE2 in general. Cause like systems wise and like the way that game moves through, or the way it adapts the RE2 scariness and the RE4 action or RE4, 5, 6, whatever action. And like, it makes it work better than I think any of these already games have before but at the same time like i started going through it and like this pacing is weird yeah this this stuff with nemesis is like this should be more exciting and i don't know why it's not exciting like he should be constantly stomping around me and occasionally he like there's a part where like you just see nemesis like kind of fuck up and jail says something like bitch can't even swim and that that made me laugh but it also made it a stark point of oh i'm not actually all that scared of nemesis right now that's not good he should be frightening me but overall, I do I did really like the game. It's just, like Blessing said, I'm not mad, just kind of disappointed. Yeah, I think you nail a lot of parts about it that I walked away from. Where I'm right there with everything everybody's saying. Right, I thought it was. I'm with Blessing too. Of like, I thought it was a good game. Uh, I don't know if it's good for sixty bucks. Granted, we haven't played the multiplayer. There's a whole conversation I'm sure we'll get to here. But in particular, like it, it, having not played Resident Evil Three period and having not done any previews for this game i only knew the debut trailer for it and i was staying dark because i loved resident evil 2 so much and i wanted to come in blind and so when nemesis really first gets introduced and really gives chase that first time and gets into this uh, giant fight with jill or whatever not even fight like i'm just i'm trying to run away from nemesis and he continues to fucking kill me just dominate me and destroy me i put it down at one point and texted him and i was just like Hey man, like you know, this is my first time ever playing Resident Evil Three. Am I missing a mechanic here? Like, am I? Am, I thought he was trying. Oh, he he. I went to this one door. He killed me there. I'm not supposed to go that way. I'm. He's hurting me every time. And like, no, every doorway I went to, this motherfucker <laughs> killed me at. And my heart was in my chest. I'm like, God damn it. Tim's like, no, you just got to get past him. I'm like, motherfucker. And so when I finally got past him, and he was running behind me, it was that. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. But I would say what by like the third time you interact with him they change the dynamic to something that's no longer that and no longer scary and then from yeah. there on out i wasn't yeah. at all i would have preferred the guy who fucked up my world right in that first encounter to be there the entire game chasing me down rather than what i think my biggest problem with the game is that it's caught between two worlds where resident evil 2, yeah, resident evil 2 i thought was such an interesting and great evolution of resident evil and it felt like a modern take on resident evil 2 a game that i had played back in the day but gotten turned off to early on because of tank controls and a whole bunch of other little things uh last year playing re2 it was on my short list for you know game of the year one of the best things i played of the year and i enjoyed it because it changed that and it modernized it but it kept what made it work this one i felt like I think this game is beautiful, with the exception of Carlos's yes. hair. I think this game is gorgeous outside of Carlos's hair, which I will continue to say. Uh, I think Nemesis, uh, those first things in the beginning made me like. Literally, I thought about like I'm not. I love scary movies. I love horror movies. I I like scary games. I legitimately thought about not playing anymore. I'm like, that's not fun. Like him just killing, getting getting killed over. But I was like, I want to keep going. And so, it's this. That's cool, and the action in moment to moment stuff's cool. But then they start dropping in these boss fights with Nemesis that I felt were so from 90s game design. Where again, back to your point, Imran, I was no longer scared of Nemesis because now he's acting as not even, I think there's like four different, not not, not literal four different Nemesis in this game. There are four different like schizophrenic personalities of Nemesis where there yeah, is the one yeah. who's lightning fast and can jump around and kill me anyway. And then there's the other one who walks slowly behind me with a grenade launcher. And I'm like, well, you're, you're not scary at all. Like I just... Gonna, or a flamethrower. I'm just going to keep dodging around this thing and not, you know, what, why am I doing this? I'm not engaged yeah. right now. He's at his scariest when he's trying to stop you from getting somewhere. And anytime it's not that, it just becomes a little boring. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and my thing is Mr. X and 2, they they changed him from the original game so much to, to be a much bigger part of the game. And he was truly frightening from beginning to end. 
uh, in, yes. in last year's game, right? Whereas, yeah, Nemesis is a bit different in this. I liked the boss battles, like, mm. and I, but I liked them in the in the way that it made it feel. I felt powerful in this game, and that's not necessarily what Resident Evil is about. Yeah. So it's like it just it this looks like RE2, but it doesn't feel like RE2. It you feels like having... RE2 in parts, not everywhere, and that's there... I think what the biggest problem with the pacing. But I'm but I'm okay with the what it was, which is kind of way more action based. Having the dodge control and all that, yes. having all that, and like having as many guns and how much ammo you do have during these boss fights. Like I liked the flamethrower mm-hmm. fight because it just it reminded me of old like '90s type video games, but modernized in the way of it looks how I remember those things looking in my head. Mm-hmm. And I feel like when we talk about the the, the graphics of this game, like God, RE mm-hmm. Engine just continues to just be the best in the damn business man it's so beautiful and seeing raccoon city look the way that it does is so impressive to me just even seeing the fire effects of the flamethrower stuff it's like i like seeing that type of stuff and it was fun to me in the short burst we get it it's just it overall you brought up the 60 dollars thing greg it's like re2 felt worth 60 dollars to me this doesn't and it's kind of hard to put into words why i feel well it's also a short game it's super short Compared, yeah, compared what was everybody's like, game clock? I beat it in two sittings, and I, it was somewhere between, like, I think it was like seven hours, 15 minutes. I had about five-something hours. Yeah, at five and a half, I did it in from starting in the afternoon, finishing in the evening. And I explored everything. Like, I yeah, me too. looked every single corner. Yeah, I, asked, I had seven and a half hours, and I, I almost beat it in two sittings, but there was a boss battle that I, that I had issue, issues with last night, and so I woke up this morning and, and beat it pretty easily. Classic video yeah. games. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. And, like, and I know like we're in this whole thing and like we're just kind of vomiting thoughts right now the one I want to get out while it's on the tip of my tongue in case I lose it for something what, one of the things I love so much about RE2 and I don't know how they do it they keep an RE3 which was that I'm in a boss battle and I have two or three bullets and I'm like how the hell am I going to do like so many games I think to your point Tim make you feel powerful in the moment and then in the cutscene afterwards make it seem like it was this really tough battle when in reality you never broke a sweat whereas Mm -hmm. this one in particular and i won't spoil stuff but playing as jill and having these moments like the final boss battle of this game i legitimately was like shit am i gonna have to reload and play from like 45 minutes ago because i only have like two shotgun shells and a grenade launcher around and I went in there and died a couple times and then was able to do it. And it was that thing of like, you know, like, oh, God, please, 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 please get it in. Like, oh, God. And like, like I felt again, like this game for all the criticism I have and for it just being a good game, it made me feel for sure. Like uh, my heart was in my chest on so many of these moments of like trying to make this happen. And that's where it's this weird thing for me, too, of talking about it, where to your point, I think it plays more of an action game than it does a survival horror game for the most yeah. part. There's definitely survival horror in there. I'm not saying there's not. But that's what mm-hmm. I got out of it, where it was like I wasn't like I wasn't RE2. Like I was very much like I'm gonna dodge these zombies. I'm gonna move around here. Whereas this one, Tim, to your point of it being linear and you having to move, like this was the thing of I had no time to fuck around and I wasn't worried about guns or bullets and I am just like spraying and praying, killing things and moving on. Yeah, I, for me, playing RE2 felt stressful in a similar way to where i'm playing bloodborne now and i'm like i love this game but i'll also hate playing this game re2 had that similar (laughs) feeling for me because of characters like mr x and because the the zombies were i mean this is the same zombies are in this game that that were in re2 right zombies are super well made yeah and like in in that game you don't have a dodge in this game in re3 you you feel way more limber and you have just way more ammo because you're just picking up way more and i i feel like where re2 was a survival horror game this is more uh, action horror mm-hmm. and you are you're you're like tim said right linear uh more action based and those are the things i actually wanted from re2 also like i was at i was at the same place where when i when we watched uh imran's gameplay from our first impressions video i was very excited because from all the things they were saying about nemesis i was like oh shoot like nemesis seems like he's gonna be a scarier version of mr x this game seems like it's gonna be be for me because i love 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 action games uh and playing this game mr x is way scarier than nemesis for me even though i actually yeah. really did like like nemesis as a character in this in the story and in in the world and, and kind of what he does overall mr x is way more way more terrifying um the atmosphere yeah. of, of re2 just feels way more terrifying and i think this game does itself a big disservice coming after re2 and i know it's re3 so that's literally what, it, what that's literally the, the point of it especially coming a year after but it it's it's a new dog with old tricks all the stuff that 
that RE2 did as far as jump scares and as far as even like puzzle solutions and stuff, I feel like RE3 kind of does a lot of the same things. Like a lot yeah. of the puzzles, I was just like, oh yeah, I played RE2. I know the answer to this. <laughs> well, like, it was that thing, kind man. of thing. I, I really appreciate in this game the amount of puzzles, which is not many. Yeah, there's like two. In the yeah, entire game. Seriously. And it's like, I'm, I'm fine with that because, and even those don't feel too out of place. And if anything, they, they kind like of just RE... broke it up a little bit. Yeah, they feel like RE4's puzzles, which is like, just find a key over in that side of the room and bring it to this side of the room. Yeah. And it's like, I'm okay with that because I did feel like with RE2, those were the moments where I'm like, all right, this is an old video game that we just have a pretty coat of paint on. Uh, whereas with this one, this just kind of feels like more of a modern game. It's just then I guess I'm judging it differently. Like I'm comparing it to other games that are of similar ilk to to an action, a modern action game. Whereas like with Resident Evil 2, it was more comparing it to Resident Evil games, you know? And, and in that sense, it was a mm -hmm. huge success. Like I, for, if you switch to the release order of these two games around, everyone would love this game. This oh, would be a absolutely. revelatory thing. Yeah. But like mm -hmm. there's certain stuff like... I don't know. I feel like RE, I, I feel like RE2. I mean, yes. Like there are certain things where, yeah, if you switch the games around, like the zombies wouldn't have been a, as impressive if, in RE2 if RE3 came first. Like a lot, a lot of those same elements cross over in a way where having them coming out one, come out one after another kind of does uh, the latter one disservice. But mm -hmm. I, for me, as somebody who historically I'm not the biggest Resident Evil person, like the most Resident Evil I played was Resident Evil 4, and even that game I didn't beat it because I just I I, I I wasn't really feeling it too much at the time because uh, I played it later and so it didn't age well to me um but for re2 i really appreciated the puzzles and i more so compared it to zelda games or so, i guess god of war god of war has puzzles but like the this this game re2 felt more uh like slow down really search the map really figure out like you're 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 opening the map and trying to figure out what goes where and you're putting the yeah. pieces together you became familiar and with the police station in a way yeah that no yeah. area in this one this, that you like no every very light metroidvania of like there's a thing in your way go find the thing to take care of it and then walk through and that's another weird thing too is and this was always true like we're, we're talking remake of another game and all of the criticisms we're we have here are not even criticisms observations were true then too resident evil 3 way more action oriented than resident evil 2 playstation versions right there are actually some things i would give the original ps1 version over this game honestly really there's like a so it used to be you could choose to fight Nemesis or run away. It, that became a lot more linear this time around. Nemesis did a bit more stalking of you and brushing through walls at like kind of random places in the original game. It also like RE3 one or the original RE3 had a boss fight this game doesn't have. It had an area this game doesn't have. And these are things that are like I don't know why you. It's already kind of suffering from content a little bit. You should not take more things out. This is kind of, for me, because I never beat the original RE3, but I got far enough to know what you're talking about. And it's like, I feel like it's kind of the damned if you do, damned if you don't. Because I think those are some of the weaker parts of they that are. game. And it's like, there's stuff that slow the game down a lot and make it more like the things I don't like about RE2. I feel like what they added in this one kind of made it feel like a more complete package. It's just that package is kind of light overall, but I don't know that we needed more. It's like, sometimes the solution isn't more and i feel like this is one of those cases where i feel like all of us are kind of just like we really liked it but i think and there I, needed that... to be like one more major area in that game because like as it starts escalating towards a climax it just catches you completely off guard it's like why was this here why why is the pacing so strange that i'm suddenly doing this right now and now the game's almost over hmm i didn't really I mean... feel that way for me, I kind of wanted more from its story, which feels like a weird thing to say, given that it doesn't seem like these games are really supposed to be like these narrative heavy uh, the games. But RE2, and I know I keep bringing it back to RE2, which it's hard not to because these games are like very much the same ilk and same, stru same structure. But I felt like I, I cared more about um, Leon and Claire in RE2 than I sure. do. Yeah. It, it is yeah. Leon and Claire, right? In RE2, mm -hmm. their names. Yes. Yeah. Than I do about Jill and Carlos. Carlos. Yeah. Well, they were like, they were Jill fish out of water in that game. In this game, everyone's a superstar cop. And that's yeah. why I think you cared more about him, right? Like I thought the you know Leon story was so interesting in RE2 of. It is, he's the rookie cop, it's his first day on the job, the welcome, you know, welcome Leon sign over there and shit of, like, coming in and I thought it made more sense when his headshots didn't connect. <laughs> Whereas now when I'm, like, Jill and I miss that, I'm like, a motherfucker, you're, like, super cop, why would you miss this? 
See, that's like, like what's interesting to me is I love Jill. I've always loved yes. Jill. She's always been my favorite of the Resident Evil characters. And her going from RE1 to uh, like she's not into, then going into RE3, it's like she survived the mansion by the skin of her teeth, right? And then now she's like trying to escape Raccoon City. And it's like, that's such a cool idea. I didn't like Jill's character in the original game because they just, I mean, just look at her outfit. Like, look how they made her dress in, in the original. It's like, they're not taking her seriously. I love the new take on Jill in this yes, one. Agreed. I just think that I want more, like, I want more backstory. It's like, yes, I feel like yeah. this game is, this game should kind of, like, RE1, 2, and 3, if there was a remake of all three that was just one, one game that took elements of each, I think it could have been fucking killer. Mm -hmm. But this I, is weird playing this because it's kind of just like, we don't get much backstory of Jill unless you know the story of the mansion. You just don't know shit. Yeah, that I mean, that was my whole thing is by the time you like certain characters interact and you you have Jill uh, or not. Yeah, Jill talking to Carlos and Jill's like, oh, you're this, this and this. And Carlos like, what? This, this and this. And I'm like, I don't know who either of you are. This game feels like it's it, it's starting at a point where like this should be partway through the story. But this is be the beginning. Uh, yeah, and I feel just thrown in here. There's a weird moment where Carlos realizes Umbrella is bad. And I'm like, as a player, what am I supposed to feel right now? Because I've known Umbrella is bad for 30 years. Like, <laughs> I, this is not a yeah. shocking thing to me. Yeah. It's just a weird moment of dramatic irony that doesn't really get much time to breathe. Yeah. And there's also, a oh, sorry. Oh, I was say, there's also a character who is like the the like the embodiment of the phrase, like, whose mans is this? Like, there's a, just, there's a character, like a bad character in the game who is not Nemesis. Who I'm like, why is he here? Like, what is his point? What uh, are you doing? I'm what, a what, bad are you doing? Guy. what are you doing here? Like, like does no one else hear him say that? Like, <laughs> like yeah. who whose man's is this? <laughs> and that's where the, the I'm not mad, I'm disappointed thing is that it's just like to me, I love the presentation of this game and I love so many elements of the stories. I'm just I just want it to be a bit more. I wanted a, a bit a bit more fleshed out to make a, a bit more sense. Um having said that, beating it, I'm like, I'm really excited for whatever's next. Like I Obviously, a lot of parts of this, like from structure to mechanics to even story, kind of feel like they're setting up an RE4 remake. And I love that. Uh, like I I'm, I'm I, I can't believe that that would be true, but that's exciting and that I I would never thought they'd actually remake three, especially not as faithfully as they did. Uh, like they did definitely changed a lot, uh, bunch of things, but it's like this is Resident Evil 3. And I, I thought that if anything, this would be kind of a DLC small side story of like, let's just say what Jill's been up to. But like they committed to this. Yeah. My question... I think that's ultimately my problem with it was that this was their chance to really make RE3 the game it should have been in the first place. And it's not quite that. It's still, it's way further than I thought they would like would ever go if they ever remade 3. But it's not quite the, this is a like a brand new full length triple a resident evil game yeah do you Great. think the you know we keep talking about it it didn't go far enough or it was short on this or you wish they would have added more and granted we're even saying like you know it did more than you thought it would with an re3 remake do yeah. you guys think that this was handed and they were like we need to get it out the year after re2 i mean not annualize the ip but hit, strike while the iron's hot and that's why it wasn't pushed further or was it just that they thought this was good enough, especially bundled with this RE multiplayer game that I haven't played and isn't available for us to try as of recording. Resistance. Yeah, I th I'm. Great I personally me think like, like it's, it's probably a combination of that and also wanting to get it out before the next generation of consoles and just mm -hmm. like have it out there. But yeah, it it does feel a little too close to RE2, and it does feel like they kind of they push the logical limits of how far they could take that. Yeah, it's, I mean, it is crazy to think that this game is a year after RE2, like actually a year after coming I mean, out. It, it it genuinely does feel like they're developed like concurrently, like at this at, at the same time, um, which is like which is which is fine. It's just one of those things where my expectations for a a sequel uh, or for like a next iteration of a series, like it just feels like it, both they they feel like they're they're pretty much the same game, but one's a continuation as a, as opposed to like a step up from the last one it's um, a weird thing though because i'm i'm okay with that like yeah if, if we were to get this level of game once a year i'm i like i would very much enjoy seeing an re4 next year you know if i have to wait but isn't i mean wait so what do you mean i'm sorry i'm gonna stop you there so you're talking about this level of game once a year but then bringing in re4 like re4 is so much more of a game than this though right 
RE3? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. just the original RE3 compared to the original RE4, yeah, definitely. Um, but I, I feel like whatever the remake would look like, or even, like, forget RE4 because, like, it's one of the best games of all time. Code Veronica, right? Yes. Like, if next year we got a Code Veronica remake that was this level of game that looks this good, sure, it's only a six to eight hour experience, I'd be okay with that because I enjoy this enough and, like, there are so many elements that I do really, really like. Again, the $60 thing, they're obviously aware. That's why Resistance exists. Like, I don't think anybody's clamoring for that. I doubt very many people are buying this for that part of this game. Sure, and but I, anything, see, that, that comes down to my, my thing where you're talking about if they did this every year. Obviously, if they did the treatment we're talking of updating and making a new RE4, of course. I mean, yeah, that's worth, I think, the $60, right? <laughs> but for what we're playing right here, paying for right here, yeah, nobody's clamoring for Resistance. But in the same breath, like... This almost strikes me of like when every single player game would like shoehorn in a multiplayer mode and you didn't care about it, but it was there and you got it. Like this is one of the few times I feel, at least in recent memory, uh, but probably is why we've been it kind of funny where there's like a legitimate, like I had fun with this game, but I couldn't recommend you buy it for 60 bucks. And that's granted, I haven't played resistance. I don't know how, if I'm going to fall in love with that or whatever, but I would have rather seen this be either DLC for RE2, which might be ridiculous or a $30 price point for this, right? Like, I mean, if, it, if they're cutting you a break somewhere in there rather than adding on a game that does anybody really care about? So yeah, one I, of the things about this game specifically is that they brought in a former head of Platinum to, like, they created a new studio for him called M2 that's, like, kind of co-owned by Capcom. And he, like, his studio made this game. So in that sense, if you look at it more like a Platinum-style game of a... It's short, but you're doing speed runs. You're getting better. You earn rewards after you like do particularly well and get achievements. Right. Then that kind of makes sense of what they're aiming for, but it's not. It's not how Resident Evil has ever operated. So yeah. I think it's mm -hmm. very I mean, yeah, strange. Yeah, it is. That's how it's always been. Like, the game's always about replaying I've, it multiple times. And I've never like, treated it like that, but I could. I know people do. So I yeah, can, I mean, yeah. a lot of people do, and it's like that's definitely not my. Uh, cup of tea and like that's the weird thing of playing three versus two two you played through both campaigns and sure you're playing through the same thing for the majority of it of claire and leon right but that got you the, up to 12 13 hours of content yeah uh, and that was worth there was a worthwhile thing at the end if you did that and i was like cool that was kind of annoying to have to do but it was worth it in the long run and i feel like that it's a lot of that extra padding that makes it worth the 60 dollars. whereas with this it didn't have that extra padding and it now feels not worth it because they cut the stuff I didn't like. So th th that's where it like just doesn't add up to me because mm -hmm. the production value of this game, like I can't imagine this game existing at thirty dollars. Yeah, you know what I mean. So and I feel like that's kind of where I'm at odds with myself because See, going I, back to the RE4 thing, it's like I don't know that I'd want it. Like RE4, if it were to come out next year, for like just just be like this, like RE4 in the RE engine cool mm -hmm. but i feel like if it took longer than that that's when the, the real expectations of i expect a lot more from a remake would come yeah i just see this a lot like i i, I see uncharted lost legacy like uncharted lost legacy is a game for me where i forget what, what price point that came out for i want to say it was like 40, 40. I think, um, which i feel like would have been appropriate for this game because yeah it's a lot of the same assets i forgot to mention too it was like the same i think it's like pretty much all the same like guns and same like a, a, so many of the of, of the same uh, assets and solutions and puzzles and and a, and a lot of the things felt lifted and direct like they felt lifted from RE2 in a way where if they make RE4 say next year or Code Veronica or whatever it may be next year and they made it this I feel like I'd be even more disappointed if all the stuff was the same again. Like I if I'm going in, in there and being like, oh, okay, cool. I played RE2 and RE3. I know exactly the steps to, to solve this thing. Or I know I'm going to get the this gun next. Or, or I know the first thing I'm going to discover is the shotgun, which might be actually an RE, RE like staple. I don't know. Yeah, that's, um, that's the thing. Is a lot of these stuff we're talking about are just kind of like that's what this franchise is. Uh -huh. And it must be hard to like modernize a series like Resident Evil in a way that like players expect and like, but doesn't entirely feel divorced from what Resident Evil was 20 years ago. Like, you want to keep the spirit of the old game. I think RE2 did that better than RE3 does. But at the same time, I also just like the way RE3 plays more than I like RE2. Which is not, like, not a thing I'd ever expect to say, but... Like, mm -hmm. the dodging thing is so fun to me. Like, getting the perfect dodge. Like, you were describing you Reg... Do your like, counter. Yeah, like... Yeah. The, I did like the that, hand, yeah. And it never tells you this, but, like, when you're playing as Carlos, he actually has, like, a different parody mechanic. Which is weirdly different and fun to master on his own too it's just i wish there was a if you 
managed to like mod this stuff in RE2, I would love RE2 even more. <laughs> I really did enjoy a lot of the enemy variation they have in this. Like the the frogs are like genuinely terrifying. Like yeah, when they're in the, the in the sewers. The, okay, because there's the, the alpha which are really fine, and the betas which I really actually hated because like they the... have a one hit kill attack. Oh yeah, yeah. Those were those, that was frustrating. But yeah. yeah, the alpha the first time you see an alpha, I thought I was gonna throw up. It was like it was terrifying. Like throw up in a good way. Like I was. Very, <laughs> we're talking about the ones good. that have the thing that come out of their mouth. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. yeah. They were awesome. I loved them. Yeah. I loved when I, uh, I, cause I, for, like, I didn't hate them. I thought they were a really cool design, but I was using the shotgun on them. So it was just like, whatever. I was able to fight them off. And the one time I got too close and I got the one hit kill animation, I was like, oh, okay. They're, they're, they're a bit more intimidating than I was giving them credit for. There's a, uh, there's one area, um, that into too many details on but uh there's the things that kind of like go in your throat yeah, oh my god yes. dude and oh, it's like, yeah. that entire area horrific was so scary to me that, like, that's what yes. the whole game to be honestly like that kind of thing of that much tension and intensity as you're like walking around slowly yeah like i that that whole bit that lasts like probably 20 minutes i was just like holy crap like the, re2 is filled with those moments but I feel yes. like it was because you're in confined hallways, whereas this mm -hmm. game is a lot more open. You're yeah. in the city a lot more than you were in two. But even then, I feel they kind of promoted this as if it was a lot more open than it, than it used to be. And at the end of the day, it's kind of just like a block and a half. You can go yeah. in different. There's different alleys that bring you to the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, but it, having said like, that, there are set pieces that use the city that are really epic and cool. And when when things are happening and like environments change, I was just like, "Oh shit!" Like they're actually doing this. That's right. I will say I did I did really enjoy the set pieces, and that's the thing that like I think can't be be overstated is that this game is beautiful. Like it's just yeah. as beautiful as RE2. It has it has moments that that pop and that for me are, are were pretty memorable. Uh, Look, the cutscenes, the characters, the way they looked, except for Carlos's hair. Um, Terrible. Over, overall, though, like it's a beautiful, beautiful game, and that the, engine is something insane. The facial animation is ridiculous. Like, there's a scene on the subway where Jill like rolls her eyes at Nikolai, and it's like honestly one of the best facial animations of that particular action I've ever seen. Period. Yeah, dude. I mean, it's I, every time we see a game use this engine, it blows my mind, and it usually is the hair that that throws things off. Um, but I, I can't wait to see what they do with RE8, like whatever oh direction God, it yeah. is oh, yeah. they, they end up going after this. Cause man, like RE engine debuted in seven and it was so good then, but they've just learned so much now. Like we've had like what five releases since then using the engine. Yeah. Uh, two RE games, DMC. Yeah. There's been a decent number. Yeah. That's, I mean, I can't wait. Imran but, being the, being the guy that's, a, a, I think the most intimate with the, the franchise's past, what do you see being the next game? Uh, I think right now Capcom loves parallel lines on things, so I I would not be shocked if they keep making remakes and they also have like a separate new Resident Evil game, like whether that's Revelations three or Resident Evil eight or whatever they end up calling it. Like I think they're gonna try and put out a new brand, like a brand new thing alongside further remakes. Mm -hmm. How they do that in the future is gonna be because like like we said, Resident Evil four is a really difficult one to remake because that game is damn near perfect in a lot of ways so trying to go back to what revolutionized honestly even modern third person tutors is going to be a lot more difficult than playing right like redoing the res evil not a lot of people cared about yeah definitely what would you want to see would you want to see a code veronica i think i would like to see a code veronica because i think code veronica is the game that could use the most work like and also just be be a better game in this style but I, I think even Capcom wants to kind of skip past it and go on really? with the mainline titles. Yeah. What's funny about Code Veronica is I remember at the time loving it and being like, "Oh my god, this is the best Resident Evil!" Like <laughs> it, it totally gets it. And then like in retrospect, looking back at it, all the things that it fixed from the the originals kind of weren't the things that we actually needed fixing. And yeah. I feel like they introduced a lot of other issues. So it would be interesting to see him go back there. I just want to see more Claire. Mm -hmm. If you think about it, like Resident Evil, the, the trifecta of Resident Evil 3, 0, and Code Veronica were what got Capcom to reconsider what Resident Evil was in the first place. And that's when actually birthed Resident Evil 4. I want to kind of see that same genesis in the remake ideas now. Like, again, love 2, love 3. 
I want to see what the next big step is in their evolution for this series. Mm-hmm. Because if it's just we're gonna make Resident Evil Four, but this time it has dual analog trigger or dual analog, then like it's the best one of the best games of all time. Please do more for it. <laughs> mm-hmm. What do you think the chances are that we get a, a Resident Evil that's a different Resident Evil Four, like a sequel to what we just got set up in two and three, but that's not the Leon story we know? I think there's a pretty decent chance. Like, there's there's hints in this game of, is Jill going to be more involved in the coming story? Because, like, she's kind of out of the story until Resident Evil 5 and in a way that people do not like. Because like, like, Honestly, like, we're going to pretend that shit doesn't exist. <laughs> I would is... like them to retcon that. And yeah, they, and I feel like they will, right? Like, if we yeah. ever get that far, there's no way they go down that path. Yeah. And there's... There's references to organizations that kind of got slightly mentioned in Resident Evil 4, but aren't quite, like, expounded upon. So, yeah, it if they do a Resident Evil 4 remake or whatever's next after this, I think we're going to get, like, a slightly different take on the story besides just, oh, it's, oh, God, what was his name? Salazar. Mm-hmm. It's just him doing his weird vi- island bullshit again. <laughs> his weird island bullshit. Uh, Bless, what would you want to yeah. see from the next one? I mean, once again, I'm not like the the biggest Resident Evil person. So if if whether whether or not they do RE8 or I guess RE4 remake, um, like I, I, let me let me talk about RE4 because RE4 is a game that I've I've tried to play multiple times and uh, I I I've I came to it very late in each time. So I probably started trying to play in like let's say 09 uh, 2010 on the Wii, which is actually like. It actually controlled pretty pretty decently, but I got tired of the motion controls. And I tried to play it on console, and it just didn't click. Uh, and so, like, if, honestly, if they just fix the controls for it and make it feel a, a bit more modern, that I could probably get with it. Because, like, overall, like, I playing it, like, as, as far as the environment, as far as, like, the story and, and the, um, the the shooting and stuff, like, I didn't have much of a problem with it. Really, what it came down to for me was controls. And so, if they if they come out and make an RE4 remake and make it with the sensibilities of this game, or these, these games being RE2 and RE3, but just don't, like, copy and paste a lot of the same, uh, like, mechanics and solutions, like, actually, like, make, and I don't, I, I don't know how much RE4 really is, like, RE2 and RE3 in terms of I'm gonna uh, find this key to unlock this thing, or like, or or how much of that there is in there. But if if they take it and if they take it and make it more new and more fresh, then that's really all I want from it. Do you guys think that uh, our kind of thoughts on this are going to be the general consensus of the game? I think so. I think, like by and large, people had high expectations of Resident Evil Three because it kind of came out of nowhere of the announcement. But we all kind of saw it coming once they announced Resident Evil Two Remake. So I think people are going to go at this like, okay, this has got to be at least as good as RE2. It turns out as least as good as RE2 is a high bar to clear. Yeah. It, I, that, yeah. I, love, I always love this uh, hypothesis before we get a chance to talk to anybody else because, of course, we're reviewing, reviewing this ahead of the embargo so we haven't talked to anybody or seen anybody's stuff because you don't talk to anybody. Now you're trapped inside. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I do think we're going to be in line. I think this is one where we're going to be all in line, and I think it speaks to how great Resident Evil 2 Remake was, where like Resident Evil 2 Remake was that game that, I couldn't put down in when I got when it was that oh I, I have to play it again ah oh, I was so stoked to play it again right whereas at when they introduced Carlos in this again me not knowing and having gone radio silent on it I was like shit fuck am I gonna have to play it from his perspective after that and I'm like I don't know if I'd want to do that again and then when it ended <laughs> and it was done I was like wow that was really short but it's it's this it's the whole have your cake and eat it too thing where. The game was short enough that it never overstayed its welcome. I didn't connect with it the way I did with RE2, but I enjoyed what I played, but I didn't want more of what I... You know what I mean? It's this whole thing of... It's this weird science where the formula just isn't right. And I, I don't know the correct way to fix it, so it is what it is, where I think it's a good game that's just overpriced, but I'm glad how it was, and I'm glad that I played it. But it is one of those that I think, especially when we get to game of the year or even years removed from this, I'm not going to think back on of like, oh, yeah, remember when this happened in Resident Evil 3? Like... I guess there's one thing of revisiting an environment where I was like, fuck, I'm back here. But that's also because I love Resident Evil 2. So I was yeah, like, neat. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to mush together it, in my head for like, it's, it's very, Resident Evil 2. It's very like context, context, context for RE3 for me because playing it, 
right? Having get like having gotten the code and sitting down and, and and playing it and removed from like everything else going on, I really enjoyed my time with RE3. Yeah, like like I I thought the story was fun. You know, not not like I I have critiques for the story, but overall, like it's a good time. Yeah, uh, it's a good that, action movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like it's a it's a good action movie, like a good B B action movie. The 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 gameplay, you know, it's it's good. The Nemesis, I really enjoyed. Like there are a lot of things I enjoyed about this game, and overall, I enjoyed my experience with this game. But then, yeah, when you bring in the context of like, oh yeah, this is sixty dollars for this game that was two sittings long. Oh man, this is coming after RE two, which I just played, and so a lot of the sensibilities that I had from RE two are just sliding right in here and i am blowing past all these challenges because it feels like it's it's them doing the same thing over and over again oh man oh man this is also like a lot shorter than re2 and and all these comparisons come into place uh and that's kind of what brings it brings it down is when you feed in context into it overall very very enjoyable game but yeah i think when it comes down to how people are gonna receive it i i i think it'll probably sit in like the eight range for the most part probably 7.5 wow. yeah i was gonna say i think it's gonna yeah. be sevens and sixes is what i see this one getting for me it's like, but like i'm being pretty kind to it because i like i just like the underlying system so much but yeah i'd say eight probably on my end i think eight will be the highs like i i, th- I think it'll be probably sevens and eights i would i would give it an eight maybe even an 8.5 just because i did enjoy it so much mm-hmm. um and it a lot of my criticisms are just mainly like the price and comparing it to re2 um, but Greg, what you were talking about with RE2 where you beat it and you immediately wanted to play more. Like I felt that way with this one as well. Yeah. Like I, when I beat it, I was like, fuck, I like I wish there was another campaign. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I do want to do more here. I was hoping the campaign wasn't going to be 80% the same, yeah. you know. Yeah, but yeah. even then it was I, I did want to get back in and I, I didn't feel any type of pull into doing that. And yeah, I think I, that and that's the thing. Well, I think that was what was so special about RE2 is that you know me and I'm not that – and people watching this clearly know me too of like – I'm not that guy. I beat a game, and it's it's incredibly rare that I do a new game plus, and even even more rare on top of that, the small percentage that I actually beat it. And so to have beaten Resident Evil 2 and start it right back up and go through and do it again, that was astounding for what that game was. And like for this one where I beat it, and it was, I went and looked at the store, and like, all right, these medallions will make me tougher. I can get a different costume or whatever. I was like, no, nah, I'm, I'm no. And even if I, you know what I mean? Like there was just nothing, nothing I felt drawing me back yeah. in. Yeah, it's, it's weird I, too having played through re2 twice like mm-hmm. having uh with both the characters like there is so much i don't like about re2 and like there's so many areas that i'm like this is frustrating like this is bad design i don't like this the sewers were not fun mm-hmm. and it's like with this game it has none of those moments but i still can't say i like it better than two well i like yeah. as soon as i finished i just went back and did another game because i was like you know this is enjoyable and i got nothing else better to do so i might as well just run through it it took me about two hours and uh, once I did that, I was like, you know what? This kind of crystallized what I didn't necessarily like about this game. But I still, again, this is it's it's one of those weird things to say of, yeah, I had this laundry list of criticisms about it, but so many of them feel like nitpicks. And at the end of the day, I did enjoy it, just not as much as I wanted to. Yeah. Yeah. Any I, closing thoughts, you guys, on Resident Evil 3 Remake? I will say that Blessing mentioned context and playing that game in the midst of like a lockdown <laughs> oh yeah it's oh, yeah. insane oh like yeah the, no the that first was... line of the uh, the opening shot is like the pandemic swept the nation by surprise like Ooh, <laughs> whoa the hospital <laughs> filled with like wash your hands posters yeah yeah, yeah no the, the legit the whole time i was thinking like this is how it starts <laughs> like 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 we're we're here now like we're we're, we're going down this road <laughs> they're, oh, they're gonna Actually, I'm not going to joke about nuking Tessa. <laughs> <laughs> you live here now. It's too late. Uh, the, my, my one thing is, yeah, I thought it was, you know, it's enjoyable. It's an enjoyable action or action horror film or whatever is how I felt like it at the end of it. To your question from earlier, I really hope, even though I know people love these remakes, I'm anxious as somebody who really liked Resident Evil 7. And d- that was like my first time, I think, ever really like connecting with the Resident Evil. I'm really excited to see where they go. I, wa- I want to see what's next and new and not just having to honor the past while trying to make it modern for the future i'd like to see here's our next step in this whole resident evil thing and what we want to do with it there you go ladies and gentlemen this has been the kind of funny games cast thank you very much for joining us this week if you are patreon.com slash games supporter uh you can get the post show now it's about to start so stay tuned until then love you